The Honourable Member, Tracy Martin. Kia ora, Mr Speaker. Kia ora. Mr Speaker, this would be a comedy of errors if it wasn't so serious. This is not funny. And it's a shame to have ministers stand up in this House and, as has been said already several times, pass the buck. They pass the buck to officials. They pass the buck to the Labour government. They pass the buck to school staff. I think that was the lowest, lowest part of this conversation, was that a part of the problem Part of the problem has been that this was a money-saving exercise. We haven't seen the end of it yet because I agree with my counterpart, um, Mr Hipkins. This is the third time or fourth time Mr Joyce has mentioned the complexity of the pay scale structure inside our schools. Now, can I just say that when an IT system is developed, the machines serve us, sir. The machines are supposed to serve us. We are not supposed to change how we do something to make it easier for the machine. And when we move to that part of the world, then I hope, sir, I am not in it. So to suggest then, so what was suggested was at the beginning of this process was, one of the suggestions was that it was actually the frontline payroll staff that were too dim to actually input the data correctly. Not only was no training offered to payroll staff, not only did they then halfway through this process show up to training and have to teach the talent to people what they were doing, but the suggestion was made in this House by an elected minister that it was them that was the problem. And yet, ultimately, sir, the reason why ministers stand and answer questions as the minister responsible is because they are responsible. The buck stops there. That's why they get paid all those bucks. The buck stops there. When I first stood for election, sir, one of the things I said in, in a public meeting was, elect somebody who reads the stuff. Elect people who read the documents they are going to make decisions on and then elect a person who, when they don't understand something that's written in it, has the courage to ask, what does that mean? Have the courage to say, as a minister, explain this to me again. That doesn't make sense to me. Bring in somebody else that can make this clear to me. Because at the end of the day, sir, this is ministerial responsibility. There are ministers here that need to take responsibility. And they need to do that for the New Zealand public. They need to do that for the staff that have been insulted by the, through this process. They need to do that for the staff, like the young first-year teacher down in Tauranga who lost her flat and had to go and move back in with her mum and dad because she didn't get paid for the whole first six months of this year. They need to do that so that the staff member who's got a $17,000 um, accumulation of overpayments sitting over here waiting for the debt collector to bang on his door while his wife hasn't been paid for three months. That stress, the ministers need to take responsibility. And it's very easy to do that. Say, it was my call and I was wrong. I was wrong, I apologise, I'm sorry. We didn't hear Mr Joyce say sorry. We heard Mr Joyce say thank you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your time. Thank you for all the people working hard behind the scenes to put the patches on. But we didn't hear him say sorry. We haven't heard an unconditional sorry from anybody. And I know it's the hardest word to say, but it actually gets you the furthest along the track. And that's all the staff want. This government is exceptionally lucky that teachers love children and love their jobs and are committed to their work because any other industry would have walked off. Any other industry would have thrown it in and said, until you pay us properly, we're not gonna do this anymore. But these people didn't. These citizens stayed in the classroom and all they ask for now is one, for somebody to take responsibility and truly say sorry, two, don't muck around with their payroll system till you get this one right. Three, they want recognition 
that it's still broken. The bank staffing that Mr Hipkins referred to is not going to wash out for another 12 months. When the headlines are gone over this issue, it will be another 12 months before schools may have to end up fronting with cash because of the payroll stuff up around this to the ministry. And they will have to take it from their operations grant. Sir, there, is, there are several, several things wrong with what has gone on, and we know it, and we need to move on, and we need to move forward. But there is obviously something wrong with the relationship between the ministers involved here and the ministry, and that is probably more serious. If the ministry doesn't feel confident enough or brave enough to say to the minister, this is wrong, and we can't do this anymore, and yes, we've spent $10 million, but to spend another $23.9 million trying to patch up a system that is terribly broken would be a mistake, then we've got an issue. Because the minister must allow people to come into her office and give her the truth, or him the truth. Whichever minister it is, must be able to let those officials come in and provide the truth, even when it's bad news. And then we need to take the steps to make it right for the mass, for the citizens inside our schools. There are many recommendations inside the report and it will take some time to digest and I hope that those, most of the recommendations will be listened to. But I would strongly urge the, ministers who, the minister who now has oversight for this issue, please talk with the sector. Stop fixing it away from them. Stop siloing it off. Actually go and see and have them input to the solutions. Don't use it as a doorway to change the pay scales. Don't use it as a doorway to save more money. Don't use it as a doorway to change anything else. Because you don't have a lot, I beg your pardon sir, the minister doesn't have a lot of trust now. And any attempt to change the structure of pay to, to hide what are actually fundamental errors with a base computer system will do nothing to restore it. We have patch upon patch upon patch on this program. So even when we fix all the backlog problems and we are running at, say, only about 23 errors per pay period, it's full of patches, sir. We're going to have to do this all again. This is not a clean program. This is not going to be the end of the issue. We now have a base program with several errors that has been patched over the top. It's not the best practice when it comes to an IT system, and I would suggest that within the next five years we're going to be looking at another one. Honourable Craig Foss. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I agree and